2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says it very simply. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, sound thinking. Now, when we came to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, when we felt the calling and the conviction of God, when that wooing of the Holy Spirit came upon us and we heard and we knew and we believed and we were trusting in and we said, this is my time. I will give my heart and life to Christ. I will follow you. All that I am, I give to you. Christ heard. He accepted. He made the offer. And He accepted uh, us receiving that offer. And He gave us at that moment in time, y'all ready for this word? Eternal life. I was born May 24th, 1962. I guess you could say I was started nine months before that. Thereabouts, right? But yet from that moment that as a 10-year-old kid, I knew that I had a need and I knew that he could meet that need, my life really began. And I have been seeking to find out more about Christ, to love Christ, Christ, to worship Christ, to praise Christ, to celebrate Christ, to yield to Christ, to, to follow Christ. I've been seeking to say more of Him and less of me. I've been seeking the, the daily application in my circumstances and in my life. But when I was 10 years old, I was given the gift of eternal life, and I was given the gift of the eternal Holy Spirit of God. I mean, the very presence of the personality and the nature, the very part of the triune God, the Holy Spirit came to live with me, I love this now, forever. Now, that was the genesis. That was the beginning. And we walked down a lot of roads together. And what I have found is he has always been true. Now, there's a difference between my spirit and the spirit that was saved by Christ. It is the same, yet on my side of it, my view of it, my spirit, sometimes I want to control it. Sometimes I want to tell it what to do. Sometimes I'm going to tell it what it can do and what it can't do. And yet, at the same time, the Holy Spirit that lives within me, that is joined within me, only speaks of God. He doesn't care about my circumstances. He cares about God's best. He doesn't care about how I feel in the moment. He cares about God's will, God's love. The path that God has me, He knows where I am. He knows what I've been through, where I'm going. And it's the Spirit of God that's going to carry me home. It's not Brian's goodness. It's not Brian's works. This is one of the amazing things is, there's not a thing that I can do to make God love me more than He already does. There's not a thing that I can do. How many of y'all mess up? There's not a thing that I can do to change God's plans for my life. Now, you may want to judge yourself, but I've already been judged by the one who is the judge, and he's already applied the medicine that I needed, which is the Spirit of Christ. He's already saved me to the uttermost. He's already cleansed me from all of my sin, and now my life is his, and now my life is about giving myself daily to the Spirit of God, believing, trusting, and allow His will to be done in my life. And what He gave me overrides all of my emotion. What He gave me should override my will. What He gave me has set me free, and I do not need to be chained again by my own feelings of inadequacies. God did not give me a part of the Holy Spirit. 
He didn't give me a nudge of the Holy Spirit. He gave me the completeness of the Holy Spirit of God. I got it all. Did you? If you didn't, you need to get saved. Because if you get saved, you get it all. Amen? And that word fear there is the word timidity. Have you ever been timid? Timidity comes up when you find yourself in a situation that you don't think that you're in control of. And it's your reaction to it. Uh, how many of y'all have Facebook? Nod your head at least, because I know you got it. <laughs> well, if you're over 25, you got it. If you're younger than 25, you might not even want it, right? It's all for old folks anyway. And they have this thing on, on Facebook. My wife doesn't like this. But they, they have those little reels. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Little snippets. And I just, you know, what you watch, they'll show you more of it. And I was watching one one time, and there's this guy that, that dresses up like a tree or a bush. And somebody will walk by and he'll yell, boo. Well, we were walking to a football game one time in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, the Georgia-Florida game. Yeah, go dogs. That's right. And, and, and we were walking down where everybody walks, and there's this Maxwell House roasting company there, and it smells wonderful. I mean, a whole city block smells like coffee. That's a good thing. It's a really good thing because the next city block smells like about 500 urinals, those porta potties. That's not a good thing. But there's a guy there, and he was, he was one of those guys. And I'm walking by, and, and Lynn and I were there, and our, our best friends were ahead of us. And he reached out and grabbed Melanie's leg. I thought she's going to kill him. You ever seen a person jump up and do a, not a 360, but a 720? She did two flips, and I thought she was going to body slam the guy right there on the sidewalk. And I, get, and I see these reels, and what's happening is these people are just walking through life, and something unexpected happened, and when, they jumped, when he jumps out at them, I, I, this is what I love. They all scream, and then they laugh. Now, Melanie didn't laugh. She's ready to kill the guy. But, but on the videos, it all shows that, that they jump and they laugh and they scream and, and they just ha, 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 ha. And they go down. And I just love them. I just watch them. And I, I don't know. I just like being scared. There are times that we don't like to be scared by life. And our confidence goes down. And we get fearful. We get timid. Can I give you just one example? Just one. How many of you are grateful for what Christ has done if you're saved? Amen? How many of you would admit that it was the greatest thing that ever happened to you in all, all of your life? Amen? That's nothing to be ashamed of, is it? How many of you have felt like you needed to share it with someone, but you didn't do it because you felt timid? That's not God's Spirit. That's your spirit overwhelming God's Spirit. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? God did not give us a spirit that should be overwhelmed by you. But as you allow God's work to be done, as you allow the Spirit to work, great things will happen. He gave you not the spirit of fear, but of power. Power, that is the word dudamus. It is the word strength. It's where we get our word dynamite. I, I miss Tim Ledford so, so very much. He sold dynamite. Explosives. I'm like, I hope you didn't carry that around in the trunk of your car. I mean, you can be a salesman for that kind of stuff, but I, I'd be, y'all. how many of y'all remember the Maverick? Was it the Maverick or the Pinto? That if you hit them from behind, they'd explode? The Pinto. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, every time I see Tim now, I think about that. If somebody ever hit that man, he'd have just blown up right in the whole place. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of overwhelming power. It comes into whatever situation and just takes it over. That's what the word power means. It is the word of God's power. It literally means this. Are you listening? Inherit power 
This is what Strong's Concordance says. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Now, if I have the Holy Spirit living within me, then there is a power that I have because of the nature of the Spirit of God that is living within me. So that when I, if I was to do it, I would come up short. But if I have the power source inherent within us, <clears throat> I don't know that you're going to get all this today, but I pray that you get this. God didn't leave you short. You have all the power to face any situation that God allows you to be in, and the power of God will make it overcome in your life. Now, if we knew that, how much more courageous would we be? The opposite of fear and timidity. We should be bold in our trust of God and the power of God. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 20. Now, I'm going to read this out of the NLT, the New Living Translation, because I just like the way it sounds in the New Living Translation. It says this, 1 Corinthians 4, 20. For the kingdom of, God, of heaven is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Y'all like that? How many of y'all have a lot of talk? Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but I'm scared to death. Hold on. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says this, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. How many of y'all qualify? Weakness. 2 Corinthians 13, 4. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. That's to these other people. The same spirit of power that was in Christ is the same spirit of power that he entrusted in us in the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you're willing to accept that yet, but that doesn't change the facts of the matter. God is not timid. He embodies truth and love and righteousness and empowers the same. Whatever the mission in life is, whatever the cause that we face, whatever circumstance, the power of God is there to uphold you. Y'all remember Samson in the Old Testament? When I was in Sunday school, when I was a little kid, they always talked to us about Samson, and they had the pictures. And you know what Samson looked like in the pictures? The Hulk. Right? But you know the reality? He was a common, ordinary Jew. You see, the thing was, he looked like everybody else. But when the endowment of God's power was on him, he could do unbelievable feats of strength. Have y'all ever seen a little kid about three years old and you say, oh, you're so strong, and they go, I mean, their arms are about as big as my thumb, right? But they go, I'm strong. I want you to think about this for just a moment. I love their boldness. Wouldn't it be great, all us weaklings out here, if we could just bow up and say, in Christ, I am so strong. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wouldn't that change us? Full access into the power of heaven. 
Mark chapter 11, verse 23 says this. Well, let me read verse 22. I, I, I told Kale verse 23, but verse 22, the end of Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Verse 23, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Now, a mountain's a great big thing. Amen? That could stand for any obstacle you have in your life. Whoever says to any obstacle, no matter how big it is, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So the power of God is released by the faith in God, trusting God, that it's God that does it and not you. And if you believe such a thing, it doesn't matter how big the obstacle is, God is bigger. God did not give us a spirit of fear, timidity, but of power and of love. Agape, God's love, heavenly love. It means to choose. Love is a choice, folks. You choose to love or you choose not to love. You choose, listen now, listen, to love lavishly or you choose to love partially. Now, when God loved you, did he choose to love partially or did he choose to love lavishly? How do you feel when someone loves you like that? I mean, they just can't stop loving you. They just can't stop pouring out their love on you. The best, best illustration I've ever heard is, is, um, is Jay, yeah, Jay's in here. My son Jay's in here. We, we had a, a church member that had a, a cabin up uh, on the Nanahala. And it literally, there was a, a waterfall of about 100 foot, and, and the cabin was at the bottom, and the water all ran into the Nanahala River, and, and it was right there by the porch. It really went underneath the porch. And, and Jay decided to take a shower in the waterfall. All 125 pounds of him. You remember that, son? If that. If that. He went in white, and he came out blue. That's some cold water. That's some cold water. It might have been a good idea until he actually got in it. But could you imagine the waters of the Niagara Falls coming down and just pouring on you? Could you imagine all the love of heaven just coming down and just pouring on you? No limit. Eternal in the stream, coming straight from the throne of God, the, the river of life, just flowing on you, how loved you are, how precious you are in Him. What a love. This morning we're going to take communion. We're going to talk about the body that was broken and the blood that was shed. Folks, that's love. The one who had everything gave everything so that we could receive everything. He loves lavishly. Sometimes you may feel like a worn out shoe, thrown away and forgotten, but you're not to the Almighty. He chooses you. He loves you. Now, the spirit that He gave you is not of timidity, not of weakness but of lavish love. Lavish love. You know what? I think we're sometimes... We're very okay with loving partially. We're very okay that if somebody does something wrong to us, to withhold that love. Because they don't meet our standard. And we feel like we have a right to be rude sometimes. We feel like we have a right to judge sometimes. We feel like we have a right to walk away. 
Christ never walked away. Christ walked into every one of those situations so that he could make it better. He chose to love us. How many broken relationships do we have? Oh, I, I, I'll still be nice to them. I, I just don't love them. That's not the Holy Spirit of God. You know what heaven's going to be? Everybody loving everybody completely. No judging. Just redeemed by the grace of God. Amen? Amen? The blood is sufficient. It cleanses us to the uttermost. Wouldn't it be great if we loved everybody else like that now? Hold on. Time out. What if they mess up? Doesn't matter. How many of y'all messed up? How many of you always mess up? Anybody perfect? So why do we judge on this sliding scale of, of this person I'll choose to love, but that person I won't? That may be many things, but it's not the love of God. He gave us His Spirit that loved lavishly. In Luke 4, Jesus began his ministry. He went to the hometown synagogue. It came a time in there when, when, when if anybody wanted to, to speak, they could, and Jesus did. And he opened the scroll to the book of Isaiah, uh, uh, chapter 11, and he began to read that about what the Messiah would be. And, and he rolled it back up and said, Today this has been fulfilled in your presence. Hold on. Did Jesus ever mess up? No. Did Jesus ever treat anybody badly? Did Jesus ever do anything other than truth? No. Jesus was perfect in all ways. If there was a mess up, it wasn't on Jesus' part. It was on somebody else's part. You know what they did to him? They threw him out of the synagogue that day. They took him to the edge of, of a cliff, and they were going to throw him off the cliff. But it wasn't his time yet, and God did not allow that. But you know what Jesus did? He didn't say, well, I give up on y'all. You know what he did? You know what he did. He loved them. He loved them. God didn't give us a spirit of timidity. But of all of the power of heaven, all of the love of heaven, and also a sound mind, sound mind thinking. This is a unique word. It means an admonishing or a calling to soundness of mind. It means this, moderation or self-control. God gave us a spirit of our thinking being controlled by the Spirit of God. Not my spirit, his spirit. It's an admonishing to take a step back, take a deep breath, and let the Holy Spirit work. Have y'all ever heard this wisdom from somebody? I mean, you may be going through something and they say this, why don't you sleep on it before you make up your mind? Have y'all ever heard that? How many of y'all have followed that advice? I mean, you're just as mad as mad could be, but you're like, I I'm just going to... Isn't it amazing something happens in the middle of the night and it's like the, the, the God sends an angel down there to, to pull out that anger and madness out of you. And you wake up the next day and you think, oh, that's not that big a deal. Have y'all ever done that? How much more if it was the Spirit of God saying, Brian, you need to shut up before you say the wrong thing. Okay. My emotion may be saying one thing. But the truth of God will say something else. There's wisdom in that. There's an admonishing to that. As a matter of fact, 
I don't know that all of us, every Christian alive, doesn't need that Holy Spirit of God all the time working in our, in our, in our brokenness to help us control that tongue, to control uh, those looks. That, how many of y'all can kill with a look? I know some of y'all. I've seen them. Y'all know what that phrase means when you go off half cock? That means the gun is pointed and it's half cocked and it won't take much for the trigger to go off. How many of you have that trigger? How many of you don't pull that trigger? The Holy Spirit says, don't do it, don't do it, don't quit, stop, put it down. How much worse would life have be if we just walked by our thinking? How much better would life be if we could take a moment, come on, to pause, to take a time out, to say a quick prayer, Lord, I'm about to mess up. I need your help. Lord, don't let me say it. You know I want to. Don't let me. Lord, I need to, can, can, you, can you throw a little bit more love this way because I need it right now. I, I need a little bit more patience and not judgment. Maybe I need to be a little weaker because the power of Brian is stepping up and I need more of the love of Christ. 